As usual, I'm always looking for unique stories to tell the good Zimbabwe story. But unbeknown to me, I have an uncle with an absolutely amazing story. To get to this story, my sister-in-law took me on a 90-kilometer journey out of Arare to Bonongwe, where she grew up under the care of her uncle. Bonongwe lies on the Wedza Road, and as we travel along that road, we took a turn off and found ourselves in vast fields of near-mature tobacco. As we drive through this road, nestled in the midst of trees, is an amazing thatched farmhouse that resembles a five-star safari lodge surrounded by lush gardens. Right, so today, guys, I have gone to visit an uncle who's got a farm just outside Bromley, where he's growing tobacco. And I want to tell you that the story that I have seen today is absolutely absolutely amazing so the, the uncle worked in a um, in the government and when the time that land reform began um, they were asked to start getting land and um, he got some land and he began to farm on six hectares of land where he was farming maize uh, soya beans and a couple of other things he was then able to prove himself after he got an extension to about 23 hectares where he grew an amazing crop. From that amazing crop, he was offered 143 hectares of land somewhere else. But because he had established himself here, he didn't find any particular reason to go and try and farm somebody somewhere else. So instead, he was able to get some of the farms that were around him and then the people that were there were then relocated elsewhere and now he's got a hundred hectares of land and from growing maize soya beans he began to grow tobacco as a contract farmer i tell you that i have seen amazing things and the work that this man is doing he learned how to farm from reading from talking to other farmers and also from sharing ideas with people that have been in the industry and using extension workers until he's been able to learn how to farm extensively in the past 23 years. The only difference is that he grew up in the villages. And as somebody that grew up in the villages, he was able to take some of the experience of having grown crops when they were younger and utilize that to commercialize his farm. And so today, I'm going to take you around this farm to see what it is that black farmers are doing in Zimbabwe and the amazing product and crop that they are producing. And so this year, we're fearing that it might be a drier year. However, with irrigation, anything is possible. So come with me and let me show you some of the amazing stuff that I've seen today. First of all is that beautiful farmhouse. There was nothing here except bush and trees. And as part of the vision of being a farmer, it took to, for him to create this over here and to start building a house for his family. It's an amazing story that I'm going to show you today. So come with me and let's have a look. In the front yard of his house are roadrunner chickens that Sekuru cherishes so much. And even before we could even sit down, he summons his helpers to slaughter a goat for us as the visitors. I'm absolutely moved because this is the life of abundance that farming is all about. I am gobsmacked by the ambience of this place. I can't stop marveling at the beauty of the manicured lawns, the beautiful gardens and the indigenous plants and trees that we're sitting under. And what is more impressive is when Sekuru Kefas tells me that everything that we see was developed and created by him from what was a bush when he got his five hectares of land. It is absolutely inspirational to know that black people can turn a bush into this garden of Eden that we're sitting in. It took no time for me to be sitting, looking at Sekuru Kefas as he told me his story. Like a little child who was listening to fairy tales, I sat and listened to Sekuru's life story. From his birth, him going to school, how it is that he took care of my sister-in-law, 
all the way up to him becoming a civil servant and leaving the civil service 22 years ago to put up the farm that he has put, which started off as five hectares and is now a hundred hectares of commercial tobacco farming land. As we waited for our goat dinner to be cooked, Sekuru asked us to come for a trip around the farm. We walked through the manicured gardens, out the gate, into the driveway, and we began to see big barns. Barns that Sekuru built by himself to start curing his first tobacco. And behind the barns, you see piles upon piles of coal that these farmers are beginning to use to cure their tobacco in order to preserve the trees and to save the environment. From the coal stockpiles, we continue to walk out of the gate. And right by the gate is a huge generator that is used to provide electricity to the entire compound and farmhouse when there is load shedding. As we step out of the gate, we see these rows upon rows of beautiful green tobacco. But Sekuru is anxious to show us his greatest investment. And right in front of us is lying 167 meters of barns to dry tobacco that Sekuru is building. So the thing I love about farming is that you can actually produce some of the inputs on your own. And one of the reasons we say that land is important is that not only are you able to grow food on the land, you're actually able to produce some of what you need to produce your infrastructure. And the bricks are one of those examples why land is important because you can actually create your own bricks and burn them and create your infrastructure which is what has happened on this farm. This is why we keep saying land is money, land is key, and everybody needs land. The huge tobacco barns are a marvel to look at. And as we walk in, we see bricks that Sekuru is making out of the clay on his farm to build this huge infrastructure. We walk in and it's absolutely amazing. So right now we are inside the barn, 167 meters, one of the longest barns I've ever seen, to cure tobacco. This is a huge investment. And this is a kind of investment that business people in Zimbabwe are putting into producing tobacco and other agricultural products. The agricultural revolution in Zimbabwe is real, and this is testament to it. This is what one individual is investing on his own farm to try and produce more tobacco over time. And even after this, he's going to build another one because he believes that he's going to be producing more. This is an amazing story about the revolution that is taking place in Zimbabwe right now. That's a huge investment that you see over here. A lot of bricks, a lot of cement have gone into this. Part and parcel of why we've got a shortage of cement is because there's a boom in the investment in infrastructure cultural infrastructure, transport infrastructure, and many other types of infrastructure take Zimbabwe into a middle-income economy from production that happens with black farmers investing. As we walk out of the barns, we begin to walk straight down to a very big dam at the end of the farm. On the left-hand side are those beautiful rows of grown tobacco. And on the right-hand side is a nursery with the young seedlings of tobacco that are then transplanted from the nursery into the big fields. Finally, we reach the big body of water that forms the dam of the farm. It's absolutely impressive. But unfortunately, this time of the year, the rains have come late and the water is at its lowest level. And Sekuru tells us that at this time, they've stopped pumping water out of the dam in order to preserve the fish and the living organisms in the body of water. The trip to Sekuru Kefas' farm has been an absolutely unbelievable experience. We've learned a lot, but more importantly, me, my brothers are totally inspired. 
we're beginning to see that the revolution of agriculture that started in Zimbabwe in 2000 is beginning to come full circle. Our fathers, the ones that took the land, have learned how to use the land. The children of those that took the land have learned how to use the land. They're investing in barns, machinery, tools, expertise, knowledge, and they're beginning to produce in what is going to be one of the biggest agricultural revolutions on the African continent. We are inspired and we leave with smiles on our face, knowing that the land of Zimbabwe is in good hands. But we also can't help to wonder if the children of the men who took this land appreciate it and will keep the legacy that we've seen at Sekuru Clefus's farm going.